All right, awesome. So today I'm really excited about our webinar. We're talking about pill-off masks, which I feel can um, be a little tricky depending on um, you know, the mask and also how much water. And I think it's easy to um, add a little too much water or not enough water. And so getting the right consistency really is difficult. So we'll go through that at the end of our webinar, but let's just hop right in. Oops, let's see, hop a little too quick. So Alexander's Aesthetics, if you are not familiar with us, we are a wholesale distributor. We carry so many different products, waxing supplies, skincare, brow, uh, and lash lifting products, tinting products, lamination, disposable tools, uh, disposables and tools, um, PPE, sugaring supplies, we have different types of masks, such as our pull-off masks. We carry SkinScript Bion, um, CA Botana, Sugar of the Nile, just to name a couple of our brands, Etel, Serapil, Lycon. We offer in-person classes and online classes. We do fun webinars like this, and we support everything that we carry, which is really great. I'm an esthetician as well, so I, before I worked here, I loved that aspect of Alexander's because we can... Um, really support you on your journey. We want you to be successful with your um, items. We have essential education, superior supplies, and um, great, great uh, customer service. We do do drop shipping, and we have curbside pickup available. We do normally have same-day shipping, which I think is fantastic and a part of our customer service. So I appreciate that as an esthetician who sometimes waits for the last minute. It's nice if you're in Colorado, you usually get it the next day or California. So my name's Trini. I am a current esthetician still, which is my favorite part about this job because I love working with clients and I just love being in the field. I am a on-staff esthetician at Alexander's Aesthetics and an educator. I love what I do and I love the products that we carry and I use them in my treatment room, which does help me get a better understanding of um, how they function, which is great. And that's why pill off masks have been a great topic for me because I use these ones. In our agenda today, we will go through a lot of different things. We're gonna step through the 10 um, jelly masks that we carry from uh, BioFrance and when and how to use them. We'll have a demonstration of how to properly mix the mask and achieve the best consistency. I'll also have videos of, um, you know, what it looks like when it's too thin, maybe how to identify that, and how to identify when the mask is maybe too thick. So this is just a little bit about um, the pill-off masks from BioFrance. They consist of the highest quality of algae-rich um, algae that's rich in vitamins and minerals. The alginate base results in occlusive action, which leaves the skin glowy and smooth, refreshed. Each formula is targeted with specific results. It's chemical free, powerful natural ingredients are used and they offer a range of age-defined results, whether we're trying to firm the skin, get glowing skin, plump the skin, lift the, you know, get a nice lifted look, uh, hydrate the skin. And it's great for all skin types, including our sensitive and acne prone skin. If you add a serum, which we'll talk about later in the demo as well, it does help increase the um, efficiency of the results. So let's hop right into the mask. So there are great masks here. The first one is probably one of my favorite of the 10. It's the 24 karat gold elite which stimulates collagen growth, pumps the skin while reducing the appearance of fine lines, illuminates, hydrates, firms the skin. And really, if the skin is looking dull, this will be a nice one to um, really rejuvenate the skin and helps the skin to retain moisture. It does leave the skin feeling smooth, supple, and bright. The active ingredients are 24 karat gold, pearl, hyaluronic acid, and uh, collagen alginate. I love this mask for um, those clients who are coming in and getting like nano needled or micro needled chemical pill 
um, or a nice enzyme. This is just going to sit nicely on the skin, hydrate, which is why I really like it after a uh, nanoing session. Just really illuminates the skin and gives it a very beautiful look. And it also looks really pretty. So it's great for, you know, our, uh, let me just let some people in really quick. There we go. Um, let me just double check my attendant, my waiting room. There are a few people. Okay, great. Um, which is great, you know, after your service, you want their skin to look healthy and hydrated. And this is wonderful as well as, like I said, for your socials, it's just a very pretty mask. And this is the one that we show on the demo, which I don't think the video does it justice, but it is beautiful. The next mask that we have is, oops, skipping ahead, the Lifting Berry and Ginseng, which is great for lifting, firming, tightening, toning, and moisturizing. So this mask is jam-packed with a lot of benefits. Leaves the skin youthful and vibrant, has ginseng, black currant, great hyaluronic acid, collagen, um, alginate, vitamins B, C, and E. And I do love their packaging. I think, it, you know, this is exactly what they look like when you get them. But super cute. I love that it has the main ingredients on the front. And this one's also uh, great for moisturizing the skin, that hyaluronic acid in there, and then a lot of vitamins. I like to use this on my normal skin types. And it just helps to really um, kind of firm up that skin. Oh, dropped a headphone in one minute, sorry. There we go. I bought these, my headphones stopped working, so I had to buy these little generic ones at Walmart. They are not two out of five on these ones. All right, collagen and rose hip. So anything rose hip or Rose scented, I immediately love. So this mask um, was a winner for me right away. It plumps the skin, hydrates, revives, and it leaves that really dewy glow, which I love, especially, you know, after doing an enzyme and their skin is just like, yes. Um, helps to resurface the skin by targeting those fine lines, reducing scarring and any photo exposure. And it holds and uh, retains that water in our um, transdermal, you know, so we're not having transdermal water loss. Results in smooth, uh, moist appearance, assisting with the prevention of new aging and existing um, wrinkles. Has hickory root, hickory root, <laughs> rose hip, vitamin C, hydro hydrolyzed collagen, retinol, and palm oil. And once again, just the art on these packaging, the packages are so cute. Our acne control, I do absolutely love this mask. Uh, I'm gonna probably say that with all of them, but I really do love using it. I feel like mixing them is pretty simplistic. I've used some other masks and, you know, it was a little shaky hit or miss whether the consistency was going to um, be correct, but this one, these masks really do hit the mark every time. This mask helps with um, kind of tightening those pores a little bit. We know we don't really open or close them, but we can assist in making them appear a little bit um, more small or a little bit more closed off. It does help matte the skin. It absorbs that extra sebum, and that's really what helps the skin get that matte appearance. It helps to reduce the scarring, so, you know, it gives those scars a little bit more of a reduced, if they're a little li more lifted, it's going to bring them more flat to the skin. Assists with inflammation while protect protecting the epidermal barrier. Prevents water loss and assists in the reduction of hyperpigmentation. It has seaweed, zinc, uh, salicylic, willow bark, niacinamide, and blue-green algae. Uh, that seaweed in there, Another headphone. Now I need two out of five on these headphones. Two out of five. Maybe by the end of this, I might be one. Struggling to keep them in there. Um, and of course, our salicylic is going to help with this as well. Injection like this, I like if you purchase this mask, take a before and after um, your facial, and I guarantee you that you will visibly see a result. It's pretty amazing. Um, I can't quite say this word, 
Argentine, it's probably a very easy word to say, but I can't say it, Argentine, Argentine, I don't know, is a mimic of the SNAP receptor. It stops the release of the neurotransmitter, inhibits muscle contraction. So that's kind of like Botox. So that's why it's called um, injection-like, because it has that same um, occurrence in the skin that Botox would, where we have that muscle con uh, constricting within the muscle. And it helps to prevent the formation of fine lines and wrinkles, and it results in plumping. So it's doing this in a very natural way without having to do filler with using these natural ingredients, um, which is that Argentine peptide, coconut, and then uh, brown algae extract. Take pictures with this on it. It has a very nice result. Sensitive oatmeal and lavender. I love this for my clients who come in and are really red or had a sunburn or maybe get very reactive when doing some type of warmer service. I enjoy using this mask to uh, calm their skin. Oops, my screen went out. There we go. Um, to really calm the skin uh, and soothe. It's rich in vitamins, helps to protect the skin. Um, like I said, it helps with those sensitive clientele. So if your client has rosacea or acne rosacea, this is a great mask to lean on to. The powerful antioxidant, uh, powerful antioxidants condition the skin and retain moisture. As French lavender, which doesn't have to sound fancy, French lavender, oatmeal, uh, rosemary, bilberry, and coconut. Vitamin C and ultra bright. Great for your uh, your clients that are coming in who have those more like leathery skin types or just need that um, boost in um, dullness and you know not boost in dullness but need a little boost in their skin if they have some dullness going on. Um, it's brightening. It helps with pigmentation. So if you're you know doing a um, micro needling session and you're trying to work with that pigmentation or if you did a enzyme that's focused more on that dermaplaning, this would be great. It's an intense um, natural anti-hyperpigmentation. It has the triad of yarrow, ladies, mantle, and malo to minimize scarring while assisting in healing the wounds on the skin. It has an immediate exfoliation, brightening, and illumination in the appearance. The active ingredients are vitamin C and E, ascorbic acid, and has five floral agents, rice powder and acerola. I think that's right. I'm an esthetician, um, not a chemist. So sometimes the ingredients are very hard for me and I apologize, but um, they're there, you can read them. And if you know how to say them right, I grant you 10 stars on this. Many cold and chirally. I, um, really, really encourage having this mask in your treatment room if you do dermaplaning, um, once again, any type of needling service. Um, warmer services for sure, because you can feel the coolness on the skin. I like this, especially if my client comes in and they have sunburn, if I'm doing like a back facial to treat sunburn, this is a really nice cooling mask. Um, also, if you're doing a vajayshal and you wanna use this, you can use it if you've done a lot of um, uh, extractions of ingrowns. Anything that might irritate the skin where it just needs that cooling acne, um, I feel like this would be a nice cooling mask if we're treating and getting some of that inflammation down. Because it immediately cools. It it's rich in vitamins E and C and A, which helps to tighten the skin, firm and soothe. That's a strong antioxidant. Um, it has peppermint and menthol, which is what provides that immediate coolness to the skin. Spirella, chirogenic complex, arnica, which is great for scarring. Um, elder wisp flower, niacinamide, and of course, we already said the vitamins that are in there. This mask is so nice, especially if you have the cool globe um, wands or if you want to do gua sha on top of it. I really, really love having this in my little um, esthetician toolbox, especially like I said, if they have sunburn, because I feel like we always get those clients who go somewhere and then come in and they're like, oh, um, you know, I didn't know if I should come in, but I got sunburned and you're doing more of like a cooling treatment to them. Or um, if we do those more 
uh, invasive procedures and they just need immediate cooling if they're more reactive. And sometimes it just feels nice anyway, especially in the summer. Seaweed, firms, lifts, brightens, and hydrates. It's rich in antioxidants and minerals. It helps to retain water, um, improve hydration and el elasticity while toning and soothing the skin surface. The seaweed complex is sea split, spirella, kelp, which immediately detoxifies and exfoliates the skin, reviving dullness and impurities. Blue and green algae are in this. The spirulina, spirulina, uh, sea salt, wheat seed extract, rosemary, and vitamins A, D, and E. Botanical hemp. This is all about cell regeneration with this mask. It's a natural active, uh, the natural active ingredient pump, hydrate, soothe, and balance the epidermis. Don't we love that as estheticians? I think that's always kind of our goal for sure. Uh, cannabis sativa pumps the skin, reducing fine lines and wrinkles. The algin and coconut oil strengthen the cell barrier, help retain moisture and firm. It has vitamins A, E, red algae, omega-3, and omega-6 fatty acids, which I love um, when I see those ingredients in any mask because we need um, our omega so much in our skin. And, you know, even just taking supplements for it helps our skin so much. Cannabis sativa oil, coconut oil, rosemary, and turmeric. And turmeric's just great for that brightening and a wonderful ingredient to have in your products as well. So those were the 10 masks. I kind of wanted to briefly go over them. I didn't want to spend a ton of time on the masks, but I just wanted to go through so you knew what this line offered and um, what the mask or who, what skin type the mask benefits. We're gonna hop into when and how to use peel off masks. I feel like this is a big question. Of course, we want to have different options of masks, but when and how do we use them? Because I feel like peel off masks have a lot of versatility and the esthetician can really use them as a tool for so many different things. So you can build a peel off mask into a regular facial service, right? And that's a pretty easy thing to do. So maybe we just have a, a service that just includes a peel off mask and it's a little bit more because these masks do um, have a price point, right? So we do have to build in their price so that we're still profiting and we're not just, you know, using our more expensive masks for free. And I think that they are a, a luxury to any service. So I think adding maybe an uh, increase in the service price is beneficial to you and your clients see these masks on the internet and TikTok and um, Instagram and they want to try it and they are beneficial. So I think if you feel comfortable adding it in to a regular facial service, just increase your price. This is an easy way to incorporate and introduce them to your mask as, or to your clients as well. Um, but you want to make sure before doing these masks, your client can have their eyes and mouth covered. Now we don't always have to cover the eyes or the mouth. We can leave both open, but just ask where they are with uh, claustrophobia, or I mean, our anxieties change day to day. So I just try to, you know, make sure. And I have found with some of my clients who were a little nervous about getting them um, over eyes and mouth at first, have, you know, as you get more comfortable with, or they get more comfortable with you, and you're more comfortable with the mask, they're more willing, you know, to have that, but it's not necessary. It is nice, and it feels wonderful. And I think it does set that space for your quiet, your client to have that quiet, moment because sometimes I feel like they feel like they have to talk once you put something over their mouth and their eyes they really get that calming space so it's nice you can also upsell these masks of course in your facial so if you have facial services that don't include this you can then upsell it like oh would you like to add a mask um, of course, if we build a pill off mask, we're going to build the price into it separately so it'll be kind of its own little thing um, but if we upsell it we want to increase you know, the price and add something in. So maybe you charge an extra $15 or whatever um, you feel comfortable adding your upsell for. The Jacials, I love um, pill off masks with the Jacials because you can utilize them in a lot of different ways, right? So if you want to add a serum underneath or you need to put a mask. So like the uh, acne and Detoxifying mask would be fantastic if they have a lot of ingrown. And maybe I can put um, 
like a hydrating jelly mask from Bion underneath, and then just lay this on top so they're getting added hydration, but the um, upper mask is really uh, increasing that service because it has its own benefits as well. And it's occlusive, so it's really pushing and driving the ingredients from the bottom mask in. We can use it on booty facials, which um, if someone's going on vacation, that 24 karat gold one would be really nice. The brightening mask would be really nice. And then, you know, that maybe doesn't have a ton of, uh, like, well, not a ton, I guess they don't have a lot of retinol, but you might just want to be careful if they're going to be in the sun, but something that would bright, brighten um, or just kind of hydrate the skin if they're getting booty facials. I really think that it completely um, takes a regular, like, booty facial to like a very luxury, lovely service. And it's on the skin so nice, your clients relax, and it's a great way to improve that. Waxing services, this is such a great moment. So let's say that we do a lip um, waxing. We can upsell like the um, Cairo, uh, sorry, I can't remember the whole name, the uh, Cairo Cold Mask, Medicold Mask on the lip or eyebrows if you, once again, if you're doing a waxing service, you could do it like a vajacial, right, you know, put this mask right after. But facial waxing, it's so wonderful to have that cold mask and just really, really calm the skin and soothe with that. So there's a lot of ways to get creative. Lip treatments, if you're doing a nano service, so if you're doing like a nano plumping service to the lips, you can set a lip treatment just from here to here and put that mask on and it would be lovely. So there's so many different ways that we can utilize these masks um, to upsell any service or just to increase um, the creativity in our treatment room. Like I said, I love doing after facials. If you do it on the back, it's really nice. My clients love back facials with um, pill off masks. Now it does take a lot of product for that. So sometimes you have to mix it a little bit thinner so that you can go the full length of the back. And of course it depends on body type and you know, blah, blah, blah. But if you can use it on the back or if you have extra packets to go maybe like two, I think two would be enough for a whole back. It is so nice. And of course our facial service just really increases. So there's also different ways that I wanna bring up that we can use this mask. So, I put the mask on on top of another mask usually, as long as they're not, there's not any contra, um, uh, any ingredients that uh, counteract with each other, I'll set a mask on top. So I love, like I said, the hydrating jelly mask from Bion is one of my favorites to just lay on this skin. And then I can put, um, you know, the 24 karat gold or whatever mask on top. And it just really provides a lot more hydration to the skin. And you can use these masks by themselves and they're gonna do their own work. I just like to double up the mask because you have that amazing power. So that mask is, the bottom mask is sitting here and then we put a hydrating mask, or the, I'm sorry, the jelly mask on top and it's really pushing those ingredients because that mask is heavy, it's occlusive. So it's really gonna push and then drive all of the ingredients into the skin. I do the same thing with like a charcoal mask and I can put the, um, acne purifying mask on top it's there's a lot of oh, I might just have one headphone I have no idea where that one went somewhere with the cord so let's hope I don't lose this one um it, there's a lot of different opportunities on how to use them I also like to put um so let's say I lay my mask down I, it's dry it's already solidified I like to put uh I use the Bion nourishing um, face and body nourishing oil, and I'll put it on top. And then I can do my whole facial massage on top of my mask, which if you ever have the opportunity to have someone do that to you, I know that can be kind of a bummer because this is the one mask you can't really do on top. Uh, definitely try putting it on and just holding my face. It's just something that someone else has to do. But if you ever have the opportunity to have someone put this mask on you, 
or cloth mask and then do a face or a facial massage or product manipulation on you. It is so wonderful. And it feels really great for your clients. Also gua sha. If you have like spoons or mushrooms, you can really do some great product manipulation, which underneath the mask, you know, all of those ingredients are getting moved. The other way I like to utilize this is if we have an acne client that comes in and we want to give them some type of facial massage or um, lymphatic movement in the skin, right? Because a lot of times we get acne because we have that stagnant um, lymph sitting in there. But we don't really want to put our hands and move, you know, bacteria and things, especially that open, um, open comedones or different areas that could uh, spread bacteria. So it's really nice if I can put a peel off mask on them, continue to do my facial massage, and those areas of bacteria or um, things we might not want to spread around are going to stay much more localized. So you can do a better um, acne facial without things moving around, or uh, not acne facial, but acne. Uh, acne facial with some type of lymphatic movement or massage, which benefits their skin so much and also helps that inflammation. So there are a lot of different ways. Now, like they were saying um, in their little description at the beginning of this PowerPoint, you can add in a serum. I've also seen people add in toners, like liquid toners instead of using water. Both will be fine. If you add a little bit of the serum and you're just gonna have to watch the mixing with consistency because those things do change, but it does add. So of course you're gonna to wanna to pair those uh, properly. If you're doing um, a brightening facial, you just wanna make sure that the serum that you're using supports the products that you have in the facial mask. So it does take a little bit of thinking and um, box upstairs to make sure you're not mixing, you know, ingredients that would come together. So I encourage you to get creative with these masks. There's so many different ways to utilize them in the treatment room instead of just, you know, thinking, I'm going to put one on the thing out. Some people, are, uh, before we go into the demo, I will say some people like to use the full gauze. Totally okay, but with this mask, you actually don't have to. I will say just tips and tricks from the institution who's been using cloth masks for a while. You wanna make sure to, if you're newer or not as comfortable, protect your sheets and linens. Um, if you don't have disposable headbands, protect those as well. I like to use disposable headbands for pill-off masks because if something happens, I don't really want to worry that I've ruined my headband um, because the first couple times that I use a pill-off mask, I definitely mess up sheets. And once that mask is on there, it's very, very, very difficult to get off. And sometimes you just can't get it off at all. So just be cautious of protecting your linens and sheets. Let's hop into the demo. So I'm going to show you a couple different videos. Well, I have these all open, so I have a huge problem. So the first one is when the mask is too thin. So when the mask is too thin, it can be very, very, very difficult to control, almost impossible. So you want to make sure that you're being really cautious. Now the mixing ratio for these masks is two to three ounces. They don't tell you a, a complete number. It's between two to three, and that varies on a lot of different factors. So, so if you add too much water, it's going to look like this, where it's you know, not really giving you a paste of any type. And you'll see that, you know, there's product and I try to like bust up the little, I call them like little product bubbles here where maybe I can get a little bit more powder. But in a second, I'm gonna pull this up against the side so you can see if it looks like, let's see, I'll pull it up on the other side too. Um, where the, if it looks like that and you're not really getting any type of like coverage and it's 
just going up against the bowl and then coming back down, that's a really good indication that, yeah, this mask is definitely too thin. So if it looks like that when I spread it on the bowl, that's what it's going to look like on the skin. It's too, like, too thin. It's just, uh, there's too much water. So when we try to apply it, we can't even get it on the spoon. We'd have to kind of do this motion and it's gonna leak and it's gonna be really impossible to pick up and it's going to take forever to solidify. So even if there's like little bits of powder left, it would be very hard to mix this mask correctly. But the positive part of this is there is a way to troubleshoot it. So if your mask ends up looking like this, um, we just add more, uh, more mask, right? We put a little bit more mask in there. Or we can um, maybe start all over because we might have to. Do it now. If, let's say you only have one gold mask and you know it's not good to mix the uh, pull-off mask together. So I would have to start all over with one more mask. Now if I have more of my gold mask, I can add more of that gold mask. This is what it would look like if it solidified. It would be very hard to get off, and it would most likely in this region still be wet. And you'd have to use a towel to take off, which then would ruin your towel. So you just want to avoid that. Pull it up on the side, um, just to kind of check that consistency to make sure. Hey, Trini, I'm just yeah. going to inter interrupt really quick. Your voice kind of trails off if you're not. It's hard to hear you, like if you're not in the middle of your screen. So uh, let me find my it. other headphones. Is it no? Like right, like right now, it sounds great. I just want to make sure everyone can hear you correctly. So just yeah. Okay, let me make sure my microphone is set on my little noodle. Let me grab my other one because I think it's underneath my desk. Somewhere. It's fine if you're like right. I just noticed you when you like scoot over to the side a little. I just thought I'd let you know. Okay, awesome. Like it sounds great right now. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you. I'll try to stay right here. Um, my other screen where the video is. Oh, actually, we can't hear you now. Maybe it is your microphone. Let me my other, my other okay. All right. Hold a moment. Underneath all my. Can you guys hear me now? Better? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great. Awesome. Thanks, Trini. Yeah, no thanks problem. everyone. Thanks, thanks for letting me know. Sorry guys, I'm telling you these headphones, if you see them at Walmart, avoid. Get Just go to Amazon and get you some good ones. They probably cost the same. Okay, so um, we're going to switch it over now to what if our mask is too thick? which definitely happens. And I will say it's almost harder to revive a too thick of a mask um, because you can't take away water, right? And if you add water, it almost becomes this bigger mess. And that's personal experience. It's very difficult to um, kind of come back from too thick of a mask. So sometimes you just have to lie it on the skin the way it is. The problem with having a really thick mask is that it's not really going to reach its potential of how far it can spread because usually you can't really see them. Usually I can get all the way to here to here with a mask so covering face, neck, and all the way down to the decollete. Now if it's too thick it's really difficult. So as you can see I didn't add enough water so it's still really powdery. I'm going to add a little bit more and mix that up as best as I can. I like to scrape the that um, powder off the edges of the mask so that I get everything in every time that I mix. And then I use this motion where I grab my plastic spoon and I just kind of scrape those edges all the way along. Now this is way too thick. It's a big waste of product, right? And we just don't want to um, waste this this mask, especially because it is something that's more of an add-on. It is a little bit more expensive expensive for us to buy for our back bar. So we wanna be able to utilize as much of this mask and take it as far down onto the skin as possible. Yes, we're still getting a spread and it's still going on throughout the skin, but um, it is very difficult to get it its full reach.
And I'm lucky that this was our little dummy Lisa because um, I got mask in her nose, but it's just harder to spread as well. And, um, you know, I can barely cover her full face. And I mean, this is a pretty small surface. So we just always want to be intentional with our water. And sometimes it's just going slow, you know, adding very slow, very slow. And I'll show you what it looks like when um, there's too much on the skin. Sorry, I had all of these pulled up earlier and they, I had them open so I wouldn't have to click, but maybe I click out of them. When these solidify, this is what it looks like when it solidifies. So when it solidifies and you touch it, you know it's, it's um, completely ready to come off because it'll have that nice firm texture. So you're not gonna be able to poke through it or it's not gonna open, meaning that the mask is not gonna um, show any skin. This video is how I mix to get the right consistency or the best consistency for me as an esthetician and then for it to get um, a good spread on the client. And then I have one more demo where I'll show you application on my actual client. So I put a whole packet in here. I like to use the rubber bowls. First of all, they're much easier to clean and we carry these at Alexander. So if you don't have them, they are very nice for pill off masks. Um, and we also carry the spoons as well. So I add a little bit of water and then I just kind of see where I'm at with that. Now you can use distilled water. Like I said, you can use a toner. There's different options and what you can mix with this. Now, I didn't have enough water, so I'm gonna slowly add a little bit more. I don't wanna add too much right away. So my best advice is don't add your two to three ounces right away. Slowly, slowly start to add. Now, even now I'm starting to say, okay, this is not enough. This is still a tricky spot to add because it's starting to get a little bit more form. So you have to really, really work that water in moving slow. Kind of like if you're making bread or dough, you're just gonna slowly add that in there. And then you'll start to mix it a, uh, more rapidly, bringing all of your product down for your side. So that's what I'm doing is I'm scraping products down into the mask and I'm really, really, really mixing it. I'm trying to scrape the bottom. So if there's any product underneath there, I get all of that product into the mix so that I have a nice fluid mask. Now, if you look at this, it's not really that lumpy. It's a pretty good consistency where if it's too lumpy, you see lumps. If it's too watery, you see fluid and lumps. And this consistency, you're just kind of seeing mask and it spreads a lot easier on the skin. I'm not struggling to push it. Um, there's a nice, it's about, I would say that between my nails, it's about that, sorry, I don't know, see that, it's about that thick. If we look at my skin, let's look at my skin. It's about that thick of a layer on their skin. I always start at the top of the face. That is preference. Um, how you apply your mask is totally up to you, but when we do the demo on my client, I'll give you um, a little bit more, in more instruction on how I do it. Of course, this is different for everyone and um, just really on how you feel. Keep in mind that this mask application is on a like plastic dummy, so it is a little harder to spread either way, but that does say something with how easy and fluid these masks do spread because this is a tougher, you know, a tough surface, tough surface to spread this mask and it's still spreading pretty great. So um, this is what you would do if you're covering the whole face into the neck and down. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this one and we'll hop over to um, the demo of my client. And I'm gonna walk you through this. So uh, my client and I, we did a uh, microneedling session with her and I laid down a little bit of hyaluronic um, acid on her skin before I started. This consistency would be very ideal for me. I don't see any clumps. I keep iPads on their eyes. I feel like 
Um, it just feels more comfortable for me with their eyelashes. You don't have to. This is just what I've always done. And I saturate my little two by twos, my intrinsic two by twos with um, toner. And then I set it on the eyes. I start at the top and I work my way down because I find that it's much easier to push that mask down towards the chin so that I am really in control of shaping. Now keep in mind, you'll see up here and it's a little hot, oh, lost a noodle. It's a little hard to see from this angle, but you can right here. Do you see how much space I'm leaving between the mask and her hairline or the mask and the headband, that's intentional. And I actually do that all the way around because what happens is as your mask solidifies, it settles itself a little further. So the mask is going to settle. And even if it doesn't really reach the hairline, I'm totally okay with that, but I don't wanna give it the ability to seep into the hair. So I give it a little bit of space so that it can set into, um, uh, the right place without going too far. I used to go all the way up to the hairline and what I would find is it was dripping down into the hair, it would get close to the ear, it would get all over my mask. So you just want to be able to protect, um, like I said, your sheets, your linens, your headbands or whatever. I use disposable headbands, which we also carry those um, and they are kind of my favorite item. But I go right over the hair, right down into the neckline. I of course have asked her if she's completely okay with being fully covered, and she was. So I'll just continue to pull this mask down. Now, I push this, I pull the mask down. So you would think that when we remove it, there's two different ways. And I've seen people roll it up this way, and I've seen people roll it down this way. I roll it down. A couple of reasons why I do that. One is because if I'm pulling up and I cover their eyes, I have a fear and I do use the cotton, uh, the four by four or the two by twos, but I still have a fear that that's gonna be an uncomfortable feeling when it comes up and it kind of lifts their lashes. Our lids close downwards. So I like to pull and roll my mask downwards so that I'm not really disrupting, you know, the natural way of the eyes opening and, uh, or them being closed. And, you know, I don't feel like it pulls um, the eyebrows as much. I also feel like having um, pull off masks done on me, I prefer to have them rolled from the top to the bottom. Comfort wise, I think it just feels a little bit better. And now I can go down into the decollete um, pretty far actually. And if you look at what I'm doing with the bowl, I'm scraping as much of it off as I can. Now I'll take my, um, let's say that this is, let me use my, so let's say that this is a bowl and I pull product out. I always kind of scrape product off and then re-swoop it up. So when doing that, I'm getting all of the product because you'll find it's very difficult once it's kind of flattened on there and you don't want to waste all of that. So fast forward, this is what the uh, product looks solidified. Um, it has a little area where it's a little thin here and that was kind of just me moving it around too much. I'm going to go in with my... Um, Bion Nutrient Essential Oil. And I'm gonna do a nice little facial massage with it. You can use Gua Sha. Uh, I love doing this and it feels so nice. But as I'm doing it, at one point, I'm gonna start to put my fingers underneath the mask and I'm going to loosen the edges. Now, does she know what I'm doing? Not really. Um, it just feels good to her, right? But what I'm actually doing is I'm loosening that mask so when I pull it, I'm not struggling to get it off. I've already loosened the edges. And then when I'm ready, it's just going to um, flawlessly come off. But she doesn't really, I mean, when someone's rubbing your face, you really don't know what's going on. So then when I have my removal, it's really simple. I've already got those edges off and I can just completely pull, roll it down nice and slow. And if there were any thinner parts or parts where the mask may have uh, broke, you'll see it there. And all we do after that is remove it with a towel. So let me in my here. Oops.
I'm gonna try to open my screen. Okay, great. So basically, it's uh, you know removing that mask and then warm towel or cool towel, however you want to remove the, the leftovers. And then you can add your serum and then your end of treatment products. I think that it's great if you add a serum underneath it as well, if you want to add a mask. There's a lot of different ways that we can um, make this a more uh, efficient mask. But it's really not that hard. I think they feel very intimidating. And yes, your couple few when you first start, it's going to be tricky getting that consistency, but please know that that's not just you. That's something that happens to everybody. So pour slow, take your time getting the water into your little um, bowl or whatever you're using. Like I said, rubber, I think is the best way. If you have a really hard bowl, it's a little more difficult to get all of that product and you can kind of squeeze, you know, a rubber bowl and move it around and manipulate that product a little bit better in there. So I'm going to open it up to questions. If you want to put it in the chat box or if you want to unmute, I'm totally okay with that as well. Um, but I think the chat box might be the easiest way so that we're not interrupting each other. But if you've had any difficulties with your pill off masks, you know, and have a question about that, this is a great time to ask. If there's something that you feel I didn't go over, put it in the chat box and we can visit that topic because they are, I mean, it's a pretty uh, different type of mask. And I think that there are a lot of things that you learn along the way. And I think even just figuring out how to remove it, you know, but if you do that motion with getting your finger underneath it and peeling it off, it's gonna give you a lot more success, especially when you're first beginning, you're gonna find that you get caught like in the little baby hairs along the head, which I feel like most of us probably have. Um, it'll help with that too, because if you have that happen, just troubleshoot wise, you'll just put your finger in and gently peel the mask up until that hair comes out. And it's, it's not gonna hurt them if you do it really slow. And the hair just encapsulates, or the mask just encapsulates, encapsulate, Capsule, capsulates the hair, so it's pretty easy to get off. That's all I have. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, please reach out. We also have a survey after this, so if you could fill that out for us, it helps me improve as an instructor, and I appreciate all feedback. Um, it just helps us get, you know, our education program to its highest uh, potential. And I appreciate everyone being here. Please reach out if you need help with pill off masks. We have so many um, different ones to choose from and they can fit all your different types of services, all the different types of skin types that you encounter as an esthetician. And um, they're just really fun to use anyway. Like I said, give yourself grace. It's totally okay to um, have a couple mess ups. I know we don't want to, but a way to practice that is use one packet and then use it as your practice packet. So mix a really thin one, see how that comes out, just so you know, like, okay, this is, this is how I know it's a little too thin and then try to correct it by adding more and then use maybe the second half of your packet to make a really thick mask and then try adding a little bit of water and, and work with one so that you're not using a lot of your packets up. Use one as like your practice, right? So don't use the whole packet right away. Maybe just use a little bit of the powder and mix and use it on yourself. If you wanna use it like on your leg or um, whatever, just so you're not wasting it and you can actually get it on the skin and start feeling how to spread it. Um, that's what I had to do when I first started learning when I didn't wanna put it on a client right away. And that's, I think what you know made it easier. I felt more confident in my treatment room. I hope you guys have a beautiful Monday and enjoy whatever you have. If you have clients, have a great service with them. And if you're off, I hope you have a great day off. Take care and thanks for hanging out with us at Alexander's Aesthetics.